this lesson will introduce you on statistics with a few definitions that you will need as we go through this unit. In this uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about sources of bias, different sampling methods, and variables when you are taking stats. First, what is statistics? We call it the study of data, how to collect, summarize, and present it. We have just done probability, which deals with chances and odds, usually the odds of winning and losing, whereas stats is based mostly on facts and collecting a lot of information. Probability deals with predicting future events, while statistic involves analyzing the frequency of past or even current events. We're going to talk about the difference versus homogeneous versus heterogeneous, which is something that you've probably heard before. We say that a population is homogeneous if all the individuals in it are similar or the same in regards to the variable that is being studied. If they are not similar, we say that a population is heterogeneous. Uh, so examples will be coming up in this lesson. There are different kinds of statistics, but there are also different ways that we can collect data. And here are some definitions that you will need for this. The first definition I'm going to show you is called population, where the entire pool from which a statistical sample is drawn. It's literally all the people that you are basically asking um, data from. There's also polls or surveys where a human research study of a public opinion is given. It is designed to represent the opinions of the population by conducting a series of questions. So many questions are being asked and people need to just answer them whether they are multiple choice questions or in phrase form. There's a census, which is an official counter survey of a population, typically recording various details of individuals. The best example would be uh, here in Canada, we have Stats Canada who holds a census every five years, and we are actually legally obligated to answer their questions. And usually this is like a census, one per household. You also have a study, so I'm sure you've heard when like studies have been done on these types of topics. It's when you're required to do research and pull experts in the domain of whatever your topic is. Next we're going to talk about sources of bias. I'm sure you've heard the word bias before when somebody is biased towards another. Um, in stats, it's really bad to have bias. Uh, and in terms of bias, you could also say it's just we do not want our uh, stats to be unfair, the way that we ask to be unfair. Um, so here is uh, different causes or reasons that could lead us to draw the wrong conclusions. So one first possible source of bias or something that will make our sample unfair is a non-representative sample of the population. So the example is to study a brand of winter clothing preferred by Canadians and we interview 1,000 Brazilians. So you can understand why that may not make sense and it could be unfair or not accurate. So we say this is a source of bias. Another example is a poorly formulated question asking, is it not wrong to pretend that it is true that bears and cactuity are mistreated? This is a pretty complicated worded question weirdly question and that could lead the person being asked to answer the wrong way because they didn't actually know what was being asked of them. This is a source of bias. Another uh, source of bias or a way that it could be unfair is the attitude actually of the person doing the study. So say a person that is asking you questions is not very nice, very intimidating, uh, very opinionated. Uh, it might lead you to actually not say the answer that you want to or even not want to do the survey at all. So this is not good. Um, an, an inadequate representation of the results. So for example, just presenting a graph that doesn't actually show what your company's growth is doing right away, that's not good. So it's not accurate. Too large a part of the sample is rejected. Uh, for example, half of those selected do not wish to answer what is your annual income. Well, maybe they do have the choice not to answer, but if half of the people aren't answering it, it really doesn't really give you the best results that you would need. And finally, another example would be a processing error when compiling data. So you or even any type of computer uh, compiling results twice or not putting results at all, that's just kind of like a human or an electrical error. Now we'll talk about some methods of sampling. So depending on the type of question you want or the stats that you want, there are different ways that you can collect the information that you need. A sample is when you take part of the population and you analyze that part. The first type of method is called simple random sampling. And this is when you have a population, like a big population, but you only pick a number of those people at random. 
everyone should have an equal chance of being chosen. Um, the best uh, example I can give is usually when you have um, names and you pull somebody out of a hat and then you ask that person. Everybody's names are in the hat, everybody's names are on the same type of paper, and the chances of you picking them are the same. Cluster sampling is when you divide a homogeneous population into groups called clusters, and only certain clusters would be selected randomly. So for example, I have a group of students and I put them into clusters just randomly, I just randomly put them into groups, and uh, of those groups I only select a few of them. However, they are homogeneous because they are all students. And the question that I'm going to ask them is about student-like questions. Systematic sampling is when you use an interval to pick the samples from a starting point. So for example, every 50th person question or every fifth person who walks into my store, I'm going to give them a survey. That's systematic. The last one is called stratified sampling, which is similar to cluster however heterogeneous. So all the groups are different. They have different subjects. And we divide them into what's called strata. So for example, when you are taking um, a group of teachers, however, you are going to stratify them into different groups based on their uh, subject that they teach. Those are strata. So here are some examples just to get you understanding a little bit more. So a random sample would be uh, we place all the students names written on pieces of paper in a box and we take out 300 at random. That's a random sample. A systematic sample is when we randomly draw number eight and therefore we choose the eighth person and then after that we decide to choose every tenth person um, which means the 18th and the 28th and these students form the sample. So we first choose the eighth person and then after that we decide every tenth after that. So when we say every so often that's systematic. For a cluster example it's as in all the education programs we choose 11 programs at random and all of the students in these programs form this sample. So we choose 11 programs, they all deal with education, so they're homogeneous, and they're all students, so they're homogeneous, but we only choose 11 clusters, 11 clusters of programs. And finally, stratified, so using a sampling method, we select 10% of the students in each education program to form the sample. So now we're talking about specifically different programs, and that's called strata because it's heterogeneous different types of programs. So you could have secondary math, secondary English, uh, elementary, and so on. What are the points of doing these different types of samples? They each have advantages and disadvantages. So random sampling is super easy to do. However, it's time consuming when you have a lot of people that you need to choose from. Systematic is very uh, easy because it can be done quickly and once an interval is chosen you can just keep going on and on and on for that interview. Well, the disadvantage is that it can be biased because it actually doesn't include everyone equally. What would happen if every fifth person happens to be a kid or a woman or a man or just not somebody who always represents the entire population that needs to be sampled? Cluster sampling is good because it could save time and money if clusters are picked and they are closer together in terms of vicinity. However, it is not as precise because you aren't really asking everybody. And um, it's also, um, well, it's just less precise than random and systematic. And stratified uh, also could reduce the sample size because you are reducing your population into different strata and asking those strata. But it's the same as cluster because you can also um, risk being biased. So if I were to put everybody in the education program, somebody in the elementary education program may not have the same opinion or a, a more valued opinion as somebody in the secondary program depending on the question being asked. This is where it comes to representative sample which is very important. The word is representative. So this is the, one of the most popular ways of sampling and it consists of getting a small sample that actually represents an even bigger sample. So for example, in a class of 30 students in which half are boys and half are girls, we may only want six students, but we would need to make sure that three of those are boys and three of those are girls, because in the actual class, half are girls and half are boys. So we kind of want to represent everybody equally, but in a smaller sample. It is definitely time-saving, but risks not accurately reflecting the views of the majority of the population. We also have variables and different types of values and stats. The first thing that I'm going to teach you is uh, qualitative values. So the word is quality. 
So a value that expresses quality. So it describes something in words or codes, no numbers. Uh, examples would be eye color, uh, color of hair, hair, uh, favorite subject, uh, things that have a word definition to them. So the opposite of this would be quantitative values, which has the word quantity in it. It's a number, height, weight, age. These are all numbers. We call them quantitative values. Of quantitative values, we have different variables. So you can have a quantitative value that is discrete where the, the data or the number can only take on certain values that are integers or only whole numbers. They are obtained by counting. So no decimals, no fractions, nothing like that. Or you can have quantitative values that we call continuous when they can go on for inf infinite amounts of uh, numbers and this includes decimals. And this is something like weight or height because we can have decimal weights or half weights or half heights. So here are some examples. I'm going to start with the census column first. So an example of a census population would be the students of a secondary school. Because it's a census, we're going to ask all the students in the school. A variable that we could study are the eye colors of the student and the number of brothers they have. So of the eye colors, we can ask them blue, brown, green. And of the number of brothers, we're going to limit ourselves to four, two, three, none, or one. Of these uh, data or variable being studied, the type for an eye color is qualitative because we have a name, blue, brown, and green. Whereas number of brothers is a number that we're asking for, so it's definitely quantitative. And because you can have half of a brother or a quarter of a brother, uh, we call this discrete because it cannot be a decimal. On our last column here, this is an example of a survey. So we're talking about athletes at the Winter Olympic Games. Uh, and we're only going to survey 250 of the 2,987 athletes. We're going to variable, we're going to study their variables of countries and their heights. The countries that we have for uh, some examples would be China, Norway, Switzerland, among all of them. And for height, we have a few different um, numbers as examples. So for country, in terms of the type of variable, it is qualitative because the data is names. Whereas for heights, the data are number with decimals. So this is quantitative, but it's also continuous quantitative. And that is the end of all the definitions you would need to know for stats. Um, uh, the next slide will be my works cited for this presentation.